My name's Corinna. Uh, I go by Corey. I'm going to be hosting today together with Lauren. Um, we are both from the Giveth team and really, really excited to, to talk to all of you today about Regen Farms. And, um, you know, I, I'll go ahead and maybe kick this off first to, uh, to Willie and we can go around and around, but I um, would love to know a little bit, you know, if you want to give a quick intro about, you know, who you are and the organization that you're representing and, and what you do there or what you do here in the universe uh, on Twitter would be great to hear from you and we can, we can just go in a round. So, um, Willie, do you want to start? Sure. GM, Karina, GM, everybody. My name is Willie, and uh, today I'm representing Shapeshift, but I am also a Giveth community member. So, cross community member between Giveth and Shapeshift, um, my two favorite projects in the space. My official role, I actually work at the foundation, and my title is a pretty fun one head of decentralization. Um, basically, what that means at the foundation, we are a not for profit organization dedicated to supporting the DAO and achieving full decentralization. So um, piece by piece, we're dismantling all of the legacy centralized shapeshift infrastructure and transitioning complete control over to the community, a few of which I see are on the call, so GM friends. And I will pass it over to Lauren. Thanks, Willie. Uh, yeah, I'm Lauren, and I am with Giveth. And yeah, I, I do a lot of management at Giveth Product Management and did a lot of organizing and launching of the region farms and anything within the Give Farm and the Give Economy. That's kind of like really like where my focus is. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be here in this space and talk a little bit more about yeah, about the region farms with people who actually have region farms and people who are participating in them, like Shapeshift and Cult, and and hopefully we're going to get the standards up in here soon too. Um, but yeah, uh, that that's me, and I will pass it on to Waste. Wait, Wastelander, right? Ah, uh, that that is correct. You know, initially I had a name that was truly impossible to pronounce, so that that was perfect. Hey, y'all. Um, I serve on the admin team at a, at a couple of different levels for Cult DAO. Um, I'm also an early believer in the ethos of Cult. Uh, to me, uh, the ethos has aligned with, with what I believe in for a number of years. It essentially addresses the question and problem space of how can we move away from tendencies of control, domination, and centralization. The answer with which Cult has supplied and which is the reason I, uh, I'm, um, you know, embedded within the ecosystem right now is we all care about scaling and decentralization. So the question you know, we ask is if decentralization as decentralization is at such and such a level right now, uh, how can we scale it up in terms of, you know, the presence and efficacy in people's lives over time as a function of and part of our proposal system? Um, I can say more about the proposal system later, um, but essentially Cult DAO funds decentralization in as much a politically agnostic way as we can. Um, and this includes delivering funding to both homegrown crypto protocols and then also projects outside of crypto. Um, these projects can all be at varying stages of development. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, glad to have you here and really excited to be talking about Regen Farms today. Um, uh, you know, that's I'll, I'll go ahead and maybe like we can I think it'd be good for everyone here on, on in the space to get some context around what Regen Farms actually are and like how how did they, you know, come to be? Uh, maybe maybe Lauren and um, and Willie, would you want to give some context around that? Yeah, I'm happy to kick it off and then I'll throw it over to Willie after. Um, so Region Farms really started after we launched the Give Economy and the Give Farm. Um, basically, Region Farms are liquidity mining opportunities that support impact DAOs, that support DAOs that are creating a positive impact in the world. So if you're a user and you want to use Region Farms, you can provide liquidity um, for that DAO's token and then stake your LP tokens and start earning rewards. Um, what makes... Regen farms different from normal farming opportunities is like number one that the DAOs you're supporting are all impact DAOs. They're all blockchain for good aligned DAOs who are trying to make the world a better place with crypto. And the second part is this really interesting thing called the stream. So you're actually getting your rewards um, 
in some part liquid and in some part streaming over time. So instead of, instead of like you can actually sustain, we actually have pretty high APRs. We can get like 100% APRs on, uh, on staking your LP tokens. Um, but instead of getting all of those rewards liquid right away and then creating all the sell pressure for the token, then people get them streamed over time. So then they become more invested in the long term in that DAO and what it's doing. And Region Farms came out of the Give Farm and after, after we had launched it. And it was actually Willie's idea to get started on it. So I, I'd love to pass it over to Willie and just get your perspective on what is Region Farms and like what made you excited about this in the first place. Um, so Willie, take it away. <laughs> you bet. Well, so the first thing, I think you covered it. The first thing that got me really excited about the region farms was that stream aspect. Um, liquidity mining is still one of the most effective ways for a new project to get liquidity. And liquidity is essential for, for any DAO that wants to have uh, a liquid token. Um, and it's difficult, especially for these social good DAOs, to build all of the different um, contracts and UI that you need to have a good farming experience. Plus, there's this uh, issue, the main issue that we have with liquidity mining is these mercenary farmers that just want to farm your token and dump it and don't actually care about the project or have any intention of being involved and participating in, for the long term. So the stream was a really effective way to mitigate this, and people really loved it. I think Give It did a, a great job of um, branding the stream as a stream. We never use the word vesting or locked, uh, even though it's very similar. Basically, these um, tokens stream to you over time. And people love it, actually. Rather than feeling like they're um, earning less, people actually love the region farm and the stream, and it keeps them coming back, and it keeps them uh, invested in the project for the long term. So it really helps you reward the best types of liquidity providers, those that are actually invested in the project for the long term, versus the mercenary liquidity farmers. So the stream itself was a really great innovation, and Giveth also, I think, just did an incredible job with the UI UX. Um, it's super smooth, and I think it's one of the best UI UXs out there for actually providing liquidity and staking it to earn yield. So um, as somebody who's launched a couple of these liquidity mining projects before, I knew how difficult it was for a project to be able to um, create the contracts, get them audited, and create the UI UX to have a good farming experience. So uh, I thought it made a lot of sense for Giveth to basically take these, this amazing experience and um, innovation that they created and make those available to other social good DAOs that needed a liquidity mining program. Um, and then we can e very easily take what we've already built, deploy new contracts, and uh, add new farming uh, project, add new projects to our farm UI. So that was kind of the initial inspiration for for the region farms. And um, yeah, fortunately, over at Shapeshift, we had we we it was perfect timing because we were also very interested in uh, getting more liquidity on Gnosis Chain, and Giveth had all the pieces available to make it very easy for us to start doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for providing some background around that. Um, and yeah, I actually hear compliments about the design all the time uh, from people uh, uh, just across like the the Giveth website in general, and also for the farm. So um, they specifically point that part out. Um, awesome. And also, uh, thanks so much for joining, uh, Joshua and Chris. Glad to have you here. Um, we were just talking about, you know, uh, Regen Farms, what they are, how they got started. And uh, we just done a little round of intros. So I'd love to give you a chance to introduce yourself, um, who you are and, and the orgs that you're representing today. Sure, I can jump in. Um, yeah, sorry. I was just having a little bit of Sorry. issues with my phone but uh yeah, um <laughs> yeah i'm here um i actually have worked uh with some of the projects in the Giveth give galaxy um in the past i am and i'm currently uh a board member for common stack and trusted seat so um but also uh here representing cult we have a cult stream um regen farm uh, which has been going really well. Um, and yeah, there's. Uh, I've been in the crypto space for a while, um, since about 2014, 2015. So um, I've been kind of doing a lot of stuff in the space around DAOs particularly. And yeah, I just um, have been really uh, impressed with a lot of the projects that, um, I mean, the Give, uh, Give Economy uh, came out about, not quite a year ago now, I guess, but um, was, yeah, the whole concept around that was really awesome and the regen forms farms kind of built out of that. And um, it was just an opportunity that I saw 
Um, like Willie said, um, building out your own um, farming contracts is not exactly the most simple thing. Um, so working together with a, a regen project like uh, Giveth for um, setting up an opportunity for the cult community, um, I thought made a lot of sense. So um, yeah, that's a, a real short, short intro. Um, I'll uh, pass it over to Josh as well. Thanks again for having this. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's just a great opportunity um, to to actually make uh, not only a difference in terms of changing money, change the world, but also, um, you know, helping projects and uh, and doing doing great things outside of base money. <laughs> so talking of base money, um, the standard is um, well. First, about me, I'm. I've uh, been in Bitcoin since the very early days, uh, sort of, uh, tw late 2010, and um, and seen everything from uh, uh, the the newest to the oldest uh, exchanges <laughs> go come and go. And um, one of the things that happened after the Mt. Gox collapse is I uh, built the uh, a transparency protocol for exchanges and. Um, called the Glassbooks Protocol, and uh, then we, we launched our own exchange called Voltoro, uh, which was the first phys uh, physical gold exchange uh, between Bitcoin and physical gold in 2015. We launched that. And, um, and one of the things we noticed that uh, we were Bitcoin only for many years, and uh, a lot of the freelancers started to invoice us in Tether around about 2020. And uh, that was a really marked difference from invoicing from Bitcoin and Ethereum and such. Um, and so I always wondered why, and really it made a lot of sense because um, you know, accounting for a very speculative asset like Bitcoin is very difficult, whereas people can uh, in invoice in in a stable coin and then uh, buy the speculative asset afterwards. And that came at the same time uh, as I came back from uh, La BitConf and gave a talk about how uh, these algorithmic stable coins are very dangerous. and um, we even, um, there's a video of me and Neville talking on stage about how um, Terra Luna or one of these will probably get very big and collapse. And on the way home on that flight, I started thinking about building uh, the ultimate fully collateralized stablecoin protocol that um, is uh, built on the EVM um, and cross-chain compatible, but also fully backed, um, being an old gold bug um, along with the Bitcoin bug made... Um, it made a lot of sense to be able to lock up assets into smart contracts. Uh, so you still o o hold the keys, but be able to issue yourself debt. Um, uh, similar to Maker DAO, but we would, um, we've basically focused on being a next generation. So, um, uh, so there was, there would be 0% interest and how we're launching is uh, through an IBCO mechanism. And uh, this is basically a yield farming exercise so that, uh, early participants can help us build a large um, protocol controlled value that would stabilize the currency and then we launch the smart vaults where people can privately remove um, uh, or privately borrow from themselves uh, at zero percent interest and um, and this was another thing this whole zero percent interest thing was a really interesting um, problem to solve because I just don't think that the new base layer of money that we're that we're building um, should have uh, you know, interest bearing on it. And so um, that was a, a big part of what we wanted to solve. And, um, and I think we've done that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks for um, sharing the background on that. And, you know, like re in, in relation to what you were just saying, um, in relation to your mission really like how like what what have you found attractive or interesting about regen farms specifically um it's uh, you know when when you get into big bitcoin the original idea of getting into bitcoin was to to remove bankers from well the the original uh, when when I why I found it so early was because I was already looking for this problem and I'd built built um, a swap site where people swap clothes rather than buying and selling, um, um, uh, and sort of cutting out that that money process and and so f for me having alternative economies has always been a really important part of um, uh, part of the entire thing and to, by by 
partnering up with uh, with Regen Farms, and um, it, it sort of goes along with that same philosophy of um, finding regenerative uh, mechanisms in life to support rather than um, rather than building on legacy systems. And I think one of the one of the really nice things about Regen Farms is just like normal farming programs you can go in and everybody's going just to earn great yields and and that's that's cool it's nice that people want to earn great yields but actually having a place where people can so earn great yields while providing liquidity and supporting DAOs that are actually really trying to make the world a better place. I think this is like really key, whether, whether it's like um, directly trying to make the world a better place by focusing on public goods or by focusing on crypto infrastructure. Um, I think that we have such a cool um, system for that. And I'd love to attract even more communities, even more for good causes into region farms who are doing that. Um, yeah, so anyway, like with that, I would love to just kind of get a little bit more, I would love to spend a little bit more time um, on on Shapeshift, on Cult, and on the standard, and talk a little bit more about kind of your vision for the future and how you really envision um, your project um, helping helping the world or using crypto for good. So maybe I'll kick it off with, let's kick it off with Willie. Thanks, Lauren. So yeah, Shapeshift, I'm really happy now that Shapeshift has gone full DAO. We are officially a public good. So everything we're building is completely open source and free. And um, we're working to make it completely decentralized. And we think that's really important. Our mission is to um, give billions of individuals around the world uh, financial sovereignty and access to this amazing financial system. Um, there's so many amazing projects out there, but in order and so many amazing protocols, um, and many of them are working towards complete decentralization. Some of them are very decentralized already, but um, the interfaces themselves are not yet decentralized. And so that's what we're very focused on at Shapeshift. We're aiming to build the ultimate interface to the decentralized universe. And we believe that the recipe for that is an interface that's non-custodial, multi-chain, completely open source, community owned rather than private, free. Obviously the best interface isn't gonna be putting fees on top of these protocols. Um, and ultimately, it needs to be completely decentralized. So um, right now, our front end is decentralized and hosted on IPFS. And the only back end is blockchain infrastructure. And we are working right now to decentralize that with a Cosmos zone. The working name is Foxchain. We're actually going to be putting up a proposal to the community soon where they can decide what the new name for this Cosmos chain will be. But it will basically incentivize validators to run the um, the unchained uh, software, which is what Shapeshift uses to run all these different nodes and index the data um, and make it available. So uh, we're expecting it to be live by Q2 2023. And once that's ready, Shapeshift's app will be completely decentralized, um, both the front end and the back end, and fully unstoppable. Uh, and also any other interface that wants to be completely decentralized, not run their own nodes or rely on a centralized node provider, will be able to uh, plug into Foxchain and uh, query data from it. All right, and I'll pass it over. That's so awesome. I, um, Eric's an old, old friend of mine, um, and and he he's so always been trailblazing um, from from the days of Satoshi Dice. Um, he, he's he's been one of these guys that's really disrupted um, uh, and and gathered people around him that disrupt the original meaning of of the uh, the cypherpunks of of transparency for the powerful and privacy for the uh, for the week and and this is really uh it's it's wonderful to see shapeshift uh shifting again um to, <laughs> to this to this amazing new DAO structure it's wonderful thanks josh yeah i couldn't agree more eric is the goat uh, and he did a great job representing all of us on that debate last week with with sbf and making the case for why interfaces should not uh, have to register as broker dealers, um, which was very much basically uh, in line with exactly what we're trying to do. And as a DAO, yeah, we, we believe that um, as an interface, just to these protocols, it's just passing information back and forth. Um, we should be able to not have an entity and not register as a broker dealer and require that our users give us their personal information. Um, yeah. So if you did, highly recommend watching that debate if you guys didn't catch it. Yeah, I was just about to say that if you guys haven't seen it, um, Eric in, in his uh, typical style of absolute uh, calmness and eloquence manages to uh, put, you know, really poignantly 
uh, draw out the reasons why we all got into this and, uh, and really coming at it from first principles um, rather than just a uh, you know, perspective of, of uh, yeah, sort of a Randian. Uh, I, I, that's what I feel is like Sam's sort of Randian way of protecting, uh, sort of fire, firewalling his own uh, interests uh, by, by legislation. Anyway, that's another thing. And this is what, another thing of regens and, and why it's so important to um, to support businesses that are really got uh, the first principles of, um, you know, do no harm um, is, uh, is really, really important. That's right. So use Shapeshift to support us. It doesn't cost you any extra. As a user, you can buy, sell, send, receive, trade, earn yield across eight different chains. And a lot of those activities, even though it doesn't cost you any extra as a user, generate revenue for the DAO uh, through affiliate partnerships. And that revenue goes directly towards furthering the development of this open source public good. So thank you for plugging us, Joshua. And I'll go ahead and I'll pass it over to Chris now to talk about Colt. Awesome. I'll, I'll start off and then I'll maybe uh, pass it over to Wastelander as well. But um, yeah, for us over, over at Colt, um, really the biggest thing for us is... Um, as, as long as our um, projects that we support um, support kind of the main three tenets of, of cult um, in the manifesto, um, that's really what we're um, aiming to uh, kind of push in, in the space. And it follows along kind of the same, same guidelines, um, kind of the same um, ethos uh, as early um, Bitcoin only, I think uh, has a lot of um, similarities also the like the bitcoin um, community and just uh, early crypto in general of um strong push for decentralization um a lot of um moving moving power relations um to people who maybe don't have um as much financial interest um so really decentralizing power to more grassroots um we call uh anyone who votes in the dao um for cult dao is uh, part of the many um, the only ones who can put uh, proposals forward to the DAO are uh, the guardians. So those are the top 50 stakers, but they also are not um, able to vote um, in the uh, proposals. So it's kind of a way of um, giving the ultimate power for passing um, proposals to the, the people who don't have the largest um, stake in the network and are, are they're able to shape um, the proposals that get passed and, and are also the largest part of the community as well. So they make up um, both our, our DAO um, decision-making power as well as our uh, community and our, our culture. So um, really that's, that's kind of the main things. Um, so basically the main, main um, things that we push for with cult are to um, further decentralization uh, or to fight against decentral or uh, against centralization um, and then to um, basically forward um, a noble cause. So uh, that can be also um, more in the regen side of things, whereas it's not, nece not necessarily profit generating um, uh, contributions, but um, sometimes their contributions more as like a, a charitable or um, um, yeah, that kind of um, donation almost but um yeah that that's kind of what we're we're at about um at cult uh i'll pass it over to wastelander if he wants to uh, give a little bit more detail there but that's kind of broad strokes yeah thanks so much chris obviously you nailed it um you've been with cult since the beginning obviously uh in my mind just to kind of give a, a slightly different perspective on exactly what you just said if there's any given like tendency towards decentralization within or outside of crypto, then that's something that CultDAO wants to and is coded to be able to amplify, right? So those could be, uh, that could be the, the visibility of what, um, you know, of the information that's out there around uh, amazing protocols like, like Shapeshift, um, the standard, anything else. Um, it could also be um, the sorts of noble causes um which inevitably are on behalf of folks who historically have been marginalized right um the tendency in my mind has been towards centralization in various different ways this is more or less obvious 
I think to everybody, you know, in this current space and to more and more people around the world um, and folks as they join crypto. So right, what Chris alluded to is that there's a little bit, um, there's, there's an aspect of cult DAO's uh, proposal and funding system, which is uh, values agnostic, um, but in relation to the prioritization of scaling decentralization over time. Um, we, and that also means, right, a corollary of that, which is what Chris mentioned, is addressing centralization directly. So, for example, uh, we have in the past uh, funded um, a couple of a couple of protocols, um, which do have as as their as their mission addressing centralization directly, along with, um, I think it was in May, uh, actually we we partnered with Anonymous. Um, which is not a crypto protocol per se, but like, you know, for, for all X, if X is um, an entity or a group moving towards decentralization globally, then potentially they are the kind of system that uh, they, they called out and fund. Um, and something that um, uh, Joshua and Willie both touched on is the need for more uh, deep rooted or systemic change, right? Um, inevitably like piecemeal changes um, really just change, you know, sort of the, the leaves or like the, the shape of whatever, um, you know, sur surface level uh, in information is available to people. Really what we want is to inculcate regenerative uh, mi mindsets out there, right? So people continually can kind of think in these ways which prioritize decentralization uh, and associated values and mindsets, um, you know, like, like regenerative. Um, thinking and, and those kinds of values. Um, there are other details around how the proposal system uh, works. Um, I'm always happy to, you know, address the, address those details. But there's there's a mountain of information available on our Discord, uh, which we're also looking to build out. Um, and um, yeah, if anybody has uh, you know questions for for me or for the admin team, always happy always happy to address those in real time over DM or voice chat. That's what sounds Oh, sorry. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting. The whole cult proposal process is really interesting. And the way you mentioned this earlier, but the way that the region farms for cult actually came about is by a proposal going up to start the region farm and then the community deciding to allocate funds to reward people who are providing liquidity for cult. Um, so it's, it's just really interesting that the way that our partnership even came about was also in this decentralized way where, where the many was able to decide that they wanted to Im implement a regen farm. And, and yeah, I'm just, just curious, do you think that, do you think that the cult community will want to continue the regen farm after the, the current reward cycle runs out? Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, brought that up in the, in the community, um, a little bit. One of the concerns is that, uh, the treasury um, at the moment is uh, a little bit low. So that was, um, I think they're kind of maybe wanting to wait a little while. Um, the bear is a, 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 a big issue uh, in the space currently, um, although we're all kind of building against it anyway. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, I think there's interest in it. Um, whether or not the funds there are, are, are there, to allocate immediately after this first allocation um, ends, it may, may be a question, but um, I think it's something that we would like to continue um, at a definitely at a later time. So um, I think I think the uh, the benefit we've got out of it is um, is tangible, um, and yeah. So I think um, yeah, it's it's again, it's not for me to necessarily answer, <laughs> but uh, uh, we can we can definitely put proposals up to. Uh, for the community um, once we have kind of the uh, um, support behind them um, to, to pass them financially anyway. <laughs> Definitely, man, the bear is just, it's just a hard time. And, and in fact, like a lot of the farming incentives that we've been doing for Giveth, we've been letting them kind of come to an end and are really looking towards like, how can we get like protocol owned liquidity um, for the DAO instead of having to continue like paying out these incentives, which becomes like really quite a challenge in the bear run. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think one of the one of the advantages of region farms is really for like when a token economy is like especially just starting out and and budding and um, looking for that like initial liquidity. And we did a lot more farming when we first launched the give economy in the early stages. Um, and in fact, um, the standard is, is kind of in, in this this point right now. Um, coming on to their initial bonding curve offering. And so I'd love to pass it on to Joshua and just give you an opportunity to talk a little bit more about kind of your vision and where you're going with the standard and um, what you're looking forward to with Regen Farms. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, for, for us, it's it's been like, how do we launch um, a stablecoin protocol that can uh, help be not just a USD stablecoin, but uh, Euro, Indian Rupee, Shekel, uh, every you know every major fiat and as well as having zero percent interest because i i um i i wanted the ability for people that are uh living paycheck to paycheck or at least close to to have the ability to start to save in uh these decentralized assets uh while then be able to borrow the liquidity they need from themselves um to to be able to survive. So then you can sort of start to break that poverty cycle at least a little bit or give the opportunity to. And um, some of the interesting things that we're looking at for um, for uh, the smart vaults once they launch um, is the ability f- uh, to reduce liquidations, especially through these sort of bear cycles uh, as much as possible. And one of the, uh, the major things we're looking at is um, auto collateral swaps to like a tokenized gold. Uh, we you know, we've been running a Bitcoin physical gold exchange for a very long time. And so we've, we've got a very good understanding of that. And what that allows is people to just jump on a different train track uh, that, is, that is still a bearer based asset, um, a rare metal rather, in a, rather than a rare number. Um, as I, I do believe that it still has, um, uh, gold still has its place uh, in, in, in society, um, uh, even though that's an unpopular opinion. Um, and uh, but uh, yeah, so so uh, that's one thing. The other thing is to be able to sell that debt as an NFT. So these collateralized debt positions that people take out um, uh, these smart vaults, they they would be able to if they if, let's say they've borrowed a whole bunch of money from themselves, um, be able to sell that uh, that if if they've lost their job or something, and the the bear market's just really kicking in, they could sell that debt as an NFT. Um, to then be able to at least recover some funds before uh, it gets liquidated. So these sorts of things are, are really interesting and I think um, help help out a lot um, uh, moving forward. But how, how this will all happen, and, and, it's, and it's interesting to see Maker coming to the same conclusions, um, and that's having a, a strong protocol controlled value that can hold a stability pool um, uh, outside of using um, uh, interest rates uh, to... To peg the uh, the stable coins, so uh, and this this protocol control value will also allow for the multiple pegging, uh, so having having uh, pegs to you know USD and, and all the other fiats as well, rather than just USD, and um, and from there we can also start to um, do interesting things. We've got uh, on our advisory board Patrick Friedman, uh, the grandson of uh, Milton Friedman, um, but also in his own right an, an amazing guy that's built build his life's work is all about startup cities uh and startup countries and um and when we these these startup countries are are starting to flourish they're also looking at interesting new ways of building regenerative uh currencies so one thing that's been sort of going around in my mind is um, imagine if you could take something uh some concepts that people have worked on in the past like uh, happiness indexes and stuff like that, and and rather than pegging a stablecoin to a fiat, you uh, could peg it to a happiness index of a of a, of a startup nation, <laughs> something like that. Sounds pretty wacky, but these are the sorts of ideas that are floating around. And um, and uh, obviously you can also um, peg it to different ind- indexes on stock and stuff like that as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the happiness index is an interesting one because you could uh, say the happier the the uh, the people are of a certain uh, geographical region, the more uh, value that that currency has, or something like that. But um, but the, these are yeah, there's just sort of wacky ways of thinking about economic theory um, outside of the traditional sense uh, when it comes to building startup countries. That's that's really cool. 
but yeah, the, the IBCO, which is the initial bonding curve offering that you mentioned um, earlier, uh, just before Lauren was, um, is uh, basically the way to build this initial protocol control value. So what we do is um, we uh, launch with S Euro first. Uh, the reason why we're going with Euro is because um, you know there are so many USD stable coins already, and um, and uh, uh, Euro is a massive market, um, and so. Uh, we we do believe it's a, it's a it's a good uh, it's a good way to launch. But what the IBCO will allow is in, in three stages. Stage one will allow people to buy the first S euro um, under under a euro, so at a discount. And the more volume that comes into the smart contract, um, the less that discount becomes until it reaches a one to one peg. And um, and then you can once you when you've got that um, that S euro, the first S euro, you can then put that into a bonding uh, curve. Uh, on uh, on Uniswap version three, so um, so we will buy the liquidity from you, similar to Olympus DAO, uh, so that we can uh, buy that liquidity, so that uh, people, you know, yield farmers don't just go off to the next big, next best thing and and leave us high and dry. Rather, we um, we will allow them to earn a really strong yield um, just for that for that launch event, and then be able to. Uh, uh, Get paid out in the in the governance token and 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 a really good yield plus helping the protocol actually launch and um, and and have that strong baseline for uh, for future growth. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Um, you know, and I was actually just thinking, like, um, in regards to the in regards to the region farms, we yeah. um, we had some. Well, let's say we had an action-packed weekend <laughs> happen uh, over the last few days, and um, there's been a lot of work on Give This Side uh, to ensure that everything is going smoothly from here on out. But I thought uh, I wanted to actually segue to this topic briefly um, to make sure that we talk about it here, especially with all of you here um, as our partners. And I thought maybe we could start with like Lauren, if you wanted to give us um, like a quick summary of what happened with the the hack on the farms this weekend and, and how this specifically affected the regen farms that we had up with Shapeshift and Colt? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Corey. So it was, it was an action packed weekend and um, it, you know, so in case you didn't hear about it, we have a couple of posts about it on our Twitter. What, what happened is that a hacker was able to set their, basically there was some compromised keys and a hacker was able to use these compromised keys to set the APRs on certain mainnet farms to some crazy insane number and then pull out whatever rewards that they could um, from that farm and then sell them on the open market. Um, the reason that the, the keys were compromised is actually because we used a vanity address to a vanity address generator to to generate these keys and then use them to, to deploy the token. Fortunately, we changed the ownership of almost everything um, from from that vanity address key generator to our giveth multisig, like right after launch, right after launching the token. But the one thing that this key did still control was the ability to change the rate of rewards going out for farms. Um, the reason we kept that separate from the multisig is because every two weeks we, we had to change it to change the rate of rewards that were flowing out. So this is kind of like the vulnerability that was in place from these compromised keys. And the, the hacker was able to, um, they, they hacked three mainnet give farms, the Angel Vault and um, the the balancer pool and and a, an archived one that we had and they were able to also do the same hack in the the cult ETH pool and pull out some of the rewards that were supposed to go to farmers. Fortunately, um, none of the LP tokens that were in the farms were were at risk because they weren't controlled by those keys at all. But we did lose some of the rewards from those farms. It was it was a kind of challenging weekend, but but we were super lucky because there's a limit to the amount of rewards that could be paid out by each farm and um and so the hacker was only able to withdraw about forty thousand dollars worth of give and about one thousand dollars worth of cult from the farms and and part of this is also because of the streams um the way that we have our rewards program set up is that only you know a certain percentage of the rewards going out are liquid right away and the other percentage is streaming over time so the hacker was also only able to claim liquid rewards so even because of the stream a lot of the tokens that were held um by those pools uh were protected as well 
so anyway, kind of a, a long-winded expl- <laughs> explanation of what happened. Sorry, one second. <clears throat> I'm so happy to hear that it was that the damage was really withheld uh, and that you guys swapped out from those from those addresses. That's, that's great. It was actually re- we were really lucky um, that the the keys the compromised keys didn't control that much, and so it was kind of a scary time. Where at first, when we didn't know what was happening, we decided to pull out liquidity for the give token, so the hacker didn't have something to dump into. And then eventually, over time, we realized what exactly was going on, what exactly had ha- had happened, and everything was just really really contained by um, by the limits on the pools and um, by the by the streams themselves. So. It's it's kind of it was kind of an interesting cool learning experience. Like number one is that like pay very close attention to what announcements about potential vulnerabilities are going out on Twitter because this profanity vulnerability that led to the compromised keys was actually uh, publicized in um, September, but no one on our team noticed or realized or really thought to to change that. So that was kind of the error that that we made on our side. Um, but so this- but. Uh, like oh, a, go ahead. A bit of software that would hash um, vanity keys, uh, or yeah, not, but but like mine and vanity keys, and that would compromise. Yeah, exactly. It was it was like it generated a, a a key. It generated a key randomly, but actually not that randomly. Um, and we used it to generate. We used it to generate a key that we used to deploy our token so that the give token could have a vanity address. So if you look at the give token address on mainnet, the beginning says good and the end says DAO. So it's it's like this like ironic price of beauty that like trying to get this cool address for the give token using this this tool that was we assumed was safe and we thought was safe and only it was only discovered in September that there was actually an issue that the keys were not random that random at all and a hacker was able to guess the keys essentially and take over those keys and and a similar um a similar the 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 exact same kind of thing happened with dap note as well you may have heard um and but unfortunately their their keys had more uh control over over different aspects of the farm so we were just very lucky in so many ways with this hack wow yeah i'm also curious Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Lauren. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Corey. I was also really curious to hear, you know, your thoughts, uh, Chris and Wastelander, um, you know, uh, what your thoughts were on this and specifically also around like how maybe like how the Web3 community could support, um, you know, DAOs who have been affected by this, but also um, really interestingly, like maybe to help prevent uh, future attacks of this sort. Do you have any input that you'd want to add there? I mean, um, I think we we had some uh, back and forth even before this um, happened, just about making sure that kind of the, the multi-sig signers knew um, what the importance of owning the contracts, um, the farming contracts were. Um, so we had transferred ownership of the contracts um, even a few months ago, I believe, to, to a multi-sig with uh, myself, Holly, um, and IRL art, Holly, I see you in the, in the, uh, listeners. Thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, we, we basically had, um, had some of these conversations about trying to minimize, um, attack vectors and that kind of thing. Um, and had, had passed over ownership to the, the multi-sig. Um, the only thing that we missed, um, and maybe could have been, um, a little bit more, uh, active on was revoking the original um, keys that were used um, their permissions as well for, like you said, for the, uh, the rewards rate contract and that kind of thing. Um, I would say, I mean, I, when I first read that, Oh, Oh no, the, the regen farms have had this issue. um, I mean, the scale of it was much, much smaller than what I initially feared um, given like the amount of hacks and things that, that happen in the space. Um, just when there's vulnerabilities that are exposed, and um, yeah, the 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 dollar figure um, was en- ended up being quite um, quite sm- quite small. Um, I think it w- was like around a thousand dollars of cult, and even uh, less than less than fifty thousand for give. Um, so I mean, that was really. I mean, I thought that spoke to um, kind of the the precautions that we had already taken um, as communities. 
and like the the developer focus um, on making sure that um, even the folks that were participating had understanding of like why the contract ownership was important, um, why we needed to trade them over to um, a multi-sig, all that kind of stuff um, was talked about. And I think I think that really did um, pay off in, in the end of minimizing the amount of um, damage that was able to be done by the attacker. So, um, I mean, that's kind of my, my um, experience from it. Um, I also am part of the multi-sig, so we had a few transactions to... Uh, to queue up and, and push through just to make sure that um, all the permissions were revoked um, in in final um, and also to cut off some of those cult streams. So again, the cult stream had, or the, the stream, I guess, um, for the Giveth farms, uh, the regen farms is also, I mean, was a bit of a safety valve there too, but um, lots of great kind of um, knock-on effects from, from that mechanism that's been implemented. So uh, we were able to, basically cut off the the streams uh, that were remaining um, from the uh, rewards that the attacker had claimed because uh, of course as we've talked about um, they flow over to over a long period of time they aren't necessarily all liquid and claimable immediately um, so yeah we were able again to minimize the damage that way um, as well so um, yeah that's that's kind of been my experience I don't know if I have a lot of um, um, ideas for how we could do better other than maybe, um, cross community uh, communication, um, particularly around vul vulnerabilities and that kind of thing. But I mean, I think that's something that generally the community, um, the crypto community, does an okay job of um, for the most part. But um, we can always do a little bit better. Yeah, there's talks of um, uh, of like alarm systems and stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's really what was. That was what Twitter was built for, really. <laughs> mass mass distribution of quick spurts of information, right? But it'd be good to get that decentralized. Um, I know that uh, friends of mine that are working um, on a protocol called Noster, which is um, uh, which is built on, uh, I think, uh, sort of Lightning Network um, stuff on Bitcoin. So there's there's um, really interesting ways to decentralize fast information. Um, blips across networks yeah definitely i think the the transferring of information is really key here and and but something that's so nice about the region blockchain for good side of crypto twitter is that like everybody's really trying to support each other there was so much support for giveth and support for dapnode after these hacks um and and we had even just so many friends who were like coming together who were trying to figure out what was the problem and the best solution to go forward um, during this hack, so I feel really grateful for that. Um, I'd love to. I notice. I know that there's like a, a bunch of people in here who are probably regen farmers, and I'd love to just spend a quick moment on like what to expect um, with this hack, because you may have noticed that the uh, the cult farm. So the cult farm was one of the farms that was affected, and basically, if you look at the old cult farm, it's showed the APR as being crazy and the rewards as being crazy, um, and and this is how the hacker was able to claim the rewards. Um, so a lot of people who are just honestly farming are like, hey, what's going on? What do I do with my LP? tokens and um so we are planning to relaunch uh, like redeploy the call eth farm and so the rewards program will continue until until the end you will have to unstake and then restake your tokens in the in the new call eth farm to continue earning rewards but any rewards that were earned up to the point of the attack we're um, looking at the block information of the rewards that people were earning at that like pre-attack block and we'll be also sending out the calls to the people who are farming so Anyone who was farming will actually get all the rewards they earned and will be able to continue earning rewards. And um, when, when Giveth sets up farms for uh, region farm communities, we, have, we take a percentage of the fees um, that they're going to be putting out to contributors to cover the cost of our, um, our development services. And so we actually have a little bit of cult from setting up the farm. And we plan to pay back all of the... We're going to send back all the the cult rewards that were lost from um, from our fee back to the cult token distro. So it's like we're like quick, quick. Let's let's just put everything back to the way that it was because it's really important for us at Giveth to make sure that we're doing right by our partners and continuing to support them even even when things like this happen. Yeah, exactly. You know, in the end, I'm just happy that like this could have been much worse 
and we have a very good way to react to this, you know, and, um, and then everyone has just been so supportive. So all in all, um, crazy weekend, but things, things look, things look pretty good, you know, all considering and it's a learning experience for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, and actually, that's a great, great way for me to segue because I'd love to shift the focus a bit to the future of Regen Farms and also your perspectives around around this as partners. Um, and then also just want to make sure we cover like how how people can get involved, right, uh, with the DAOs themselves as well as, as the Regen Farms. So um, yeah, I got a question for you actually, Joshua, like what, what outcome would you like to see from, from the Regen Farms in this new partnership with Gibbous as you're getting ready to launch one? Um. Yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I you know I've been uh, it's been Tyre that's been working on the proposals, so I can't really speak to that um, that much. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. that's yeah. No worries. Also, I didn't want to put you on the spot. Um, I, I wonder if if Tyre's listening, uh, he might be able to come up and, and say because he's um, yeah. But I'll, I'll get back. I'll, I'll if you go to someone else and I'll. Try to chase up to these yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. I also, um, yeah. If if you want to speak to that, uh, Chris or Willie um, or Wastelander, you know, like what what you're looking to see from the Region Farms in the future, um, or also maybe also how liquidity liquidity providers can get involved and further support the DAOs within the Region Farms, since you've you've had your farms open for a while. Yeah, I mean, I think Give It does a great job with the region farms. Like it's like I said earlier, I really think it's the best UX for farming out there. The contracts are awesome. Um, there was a small exploit due to something outside of the contracts, just this exploited vanity address. And as a result, Give It is even more secure now going forward. So um, I, I what I would really like to see is just more projects, more social good projects launch region farms so that as a, a farmer who wants to support social good projects and also earn a, a solid yield, you can come to the Giveth Farm and find all these projects and kind of um, easily claim your rewards and manage your portfolio of, of uh, liquidity pool tokens for these social good projects that you're supporting uh, and earning more of a, a share of ownership in. Um, yeah, I think really that's, that's I think the main thing that would help improve the, the region farms is just more really awesome projects. And I would like to see like ideally a lot of the top social good projects in web three, um, launching a region firm. Yeah. And if you, if you, um, I think the, the tweet about this region farm gathering actually has a link to a blog post I wrote where there's a, um, a link from there, or you could even just go to give slash give farm and scroll down to the bottom. And there's like an add your DAO prompt where you can fill out a form. And if you're an impact DAO or you have a token that you want to incentivize liquidity and you, you want to get involved with region farms and have your farm card up there as well, alongside Shapeshift and Cult and the standard coming soon, um, you can apply for your DAO there and then we'll see the request and, and start the process. Yeah, and Lauren, um, how does, you know, how does Giveth actually decide, you know, who will have a region farm? once people have applied yeah when somebody applies um for a region farm uh i'll review it or katavi will review it who's listening in the audience right now um and we'll we'll put together we'll we'll reach out to the person who who provided the information do a little bit of back and forth and see um if if they fully understand how region farm works or any questions that they might have and then once everything has been sorted out there um we get a forum proposal up in giveth and basically propose the region farm to the community and the giveth DAO. Anybody who holds give tokens has the opportunity to vote via snapshot on, yes, they think this is a great idea or no, they don't like this farm. And and honestly, the, the I think the main criteria is that we want people who are impact DAOs. We want people who are using blockchain for good, to, to use crypto, to make the world a better place. And so I think that's what the majority of the, the give holders are looking for when they're voting on these region farms. <laughs> 